Good morning, and welcome to Duality. I'm here with my special guest, Jay Spades. And we are going to talk about a few different topics, but before we get into everything, we have a incredible band member over here, Lori Love, going to play the Throat Chakra Bowl to just kind of get us all present and grounded and ready to speak our truth for everybody who's tuning in now, whoever will tune in, to, for us to just all take a breath and get resonant in this present moment. So I invite you all to get comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's life. And <laughs> take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. That was bad. That was needed. That was needed. You know, I miss the bowls being here at to intro. Honestly, I need to bring that back. You know, for all of those who have been tuning into Duality and know how um, we did the Seven Chakra series, and each week we were playing a different bowl. And I really like the idea of just grounding into the present moment prior to speaking. I think that it's really important that we do that and carry that practice in our everyday life, and um, it brings a lot more peace for ourselves, most of all. So yeah, today's topic is going to be about ourselves and who are we and who are you? Who are you? <laughs> in a uh, theme of Alice in Wonderland, I'm sitting with the Mad Hatter. We're sipping our tea out of Cheers. Glass. Cheers. There we are. And um, the topic at hand is definitely something that I think is really important and crucial. I know that a lot of us experience this and if not all of us experience this in different ways so in the light of this being the last episode before valentine's day in february and i wanted to kind of touch base on how to not lose your core when you're in a relationship and or when you're dating and also how that could trickle out into all relationships like naturally that can trickle out into friendships and work environments and family and how to just maintain your core. But I find very specifically that when people start to date others and um, something new, like a new love kind of experience, that it's really hard to stay grounded in that self, you mm -hmm. know, where it's like you're excited and these different things start happening. And it's like you almost like people pleasing tendencies and these different mm -hmm. shadows come out. And it's like, oh, well, I don't want to show this because you know, I don't want to show all my cards. I don't yeah. want to, you know, I want to hide this. If you're, if you're smart about it. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if you're experienced. Maybe. Are you experienced? Maybe. Or one would say if you're smart about it to show your whole hand. It really depends on the person and on what the, what is received. Like, I believe that it's more bold and um, more authentic to the person when they do say everything. Because you find your, like, intention in it yeah where does it start because what foot you start on can end up the foot you land on mm -hmm. if it started with a false step you can always like pick yourself up and continue the dance mm -hmm. you know make mm -hmm. it part of the dance mm -hmm. but like if you already step off where you have shit intention like you know it's null, null intention it doesn't really build it's not ground to build on what gets you done know? in the dark always comes to light so at the end of the day if it's a year like some people are in a relationship with another and they don't know their partner for years. And then they find out three years later all this shit about them. And they're like, who am I with? Some people get married to people mm -hmm. and they don't know who their partner is until a certain circumstance or situation will happen. And they see their reaction and or they find something out. And God forbid, it's like really harmful to them as well. 
So I think that it takes an immense amount of courage to be honest and straight up with people upon meeting them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's something that could get very uncomfortable because if you're not consistently doing that within yourself, like, how could you possibly do that with somebody else? I mean, it, it, if it's not equal in that sense, because you could do that. And mm -hmm. that's what I do. Always mm -hmm. first step is like, yo, no smoke and mirrors. Here's how it is. Yeah. And then that leaves the it leaves it open. It gives the ball in their court to give that respect and that like back, you know, that return of it. Or you find out two years later that you never knew this person. Yeah. But when you fall in love for me, I feel like it kind of is like, there's this, there's like a scene in the, the show Yu-Gi-Oh back in the day. And when he goes into the millennial puzzle, he, he goes into a different part of his mind, of his mirror, like a different part of his soul, which is when you find your soul mate, your mate to soul, your mirror of soul, your reflection. Mm -hmm. So he goes into this little box and the box holds the other ancient side of him. So then this box is like a labyrinth and it's all these stepways and different paths and there's doors. So when you go into a relationship, it's kind of like you open the door to their mind, mm -hmm. which also is your mind because mm -hmm. it's a pathway which you're both intertwined and connected on so many levels. So then it's like when you're, you, you knock on the door, sometimes you just open it. Sometimes it's unlocked. Sometimes it has like a puzzle to it. Some, lo some locks are completely hidden to the point where they never unlock that door for you. You know? Like, no, that's, you that's know, nobody a really owes great you that, elaboration though. on that. No, nobody does owe nobody you that. Nobody owes but you that truth. You, get, you give that to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really cool about the whole process is like you get to give that to yourself. You get to figure out and find the keys and mm. open up the doors. And then after you open up the doors, you don't need the keys anymore because mm -hmm. you've already walked through there. There we go. So, exactly. I'm like, I'm, I just completely went rogue on not going live on my Instagram. And I realized that. So I was just like, all right, you know what? It wasn't supposed to be. We're here. We're here. And I think that exactly what you said is really important. And that brings light onto an, another topic, which is, Soulmates, twin flames, there's a lot of different mm -hmm. things that, uh, a lot of different terms for different things. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like, I didn't realize that we were gonna talk about this today, but you know, I'm looking over there at this fire, I'm looking over here at this woman, I'm looking, you know, and there's just things around and cues. And mm -hmm. you know, what is the difference between twin flame and soulmate? Is that something that you've like unpacked a little bit or mm -hmm. like looked into? Mm -hmm. Well, I believe, I believe everybody has a different version of soulmates, mm -hmm. right? I think that n you don't necessarily have one. It's impossible. It, yeah. can't, it can't be. It's an energetic like key to unlocking your future self mm -hmm. in which when people meet one another, they're attracted to certain traits of that person. They don't even realize that that's a part of them. Like, it's so interesting how we are attracted to people that remind us of ourselves. Ooh, Bane is fun. Oh that my god! <laughs> For me, like, yo, yeah. she, if she look like me, I'm interested. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy it's as like, hell. I feel like that's <laughs> what we usually end up like. Actually, like first off, being with anyone, it's like resonance, right? Yo, it's, it's like, crazy. oh my god, me and this person, we link like this, yo. and we are like this, and it's like, fuck. Like, Secretly though, I'm like, damn, I love me, and I kind of like be like. I want to love me some more, but this person's just like me. Like, oh, shit. Catalyst to self-love. There we go. Doesn't have to be a bad thing. Also, doesn't have to be selfish. Because when you find the balance of that, and when you get to acknowledge, like, hey, I like this about this person because it reminds me of me. Or, hey, I like this about this person because it reminds me of what I'd like to be. Mm -hmm. And that's when you unlock and discover a part of yourself. Mm -hmm. You're, like, literally, like, I didn't know I was an artist. I didn't know I was, I didn't know I paint. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I didn't and, know that I loved fashion mm -hmm. until I met this girl. I, mm -hmm. And then she brought me to my first thrift shop in Brooklyn. Or you did know, and now you're just seeing that it's something you're supposed to pursue more. And that's the thing. When you get into these themes, right, it's like well, if you look at all of the people you've dated, you know, there's going to be different different common denominators that you'll find. Like, they could be all completely different people, but you could find things. You can find things either within them or within yourself, what you what you were attracted mm -hmm. to. And, you know, at, naturally there's, in life, ebbs and flows, highs and lows. So at times, uh, in a lower place, we might have been attracted to something that might be more considered toxic. But then again, it was still something you wanted because there was an escape or something. Or that person had something that they were doing. Still, even if it wasn't healthy... 
It was something you, were you wanted, to you were attracted to it because to you felt you needed it at the mm -hmm. time. So if you're trying to escape from reality and you are with somebody who's escaping from reality and not so whatever, whatever way, no judgment on that. Mm -hmm. Like, because I could look back even speaking on myself, like looking at that and seeing those different, those different times where that came in, mm -hmm. you know, and then also just looking at different themes and seeing how I, I realized, okay, well, everybody that I'm dating has this in common and all of them having this yep. in common, maybe I should look at that. Exactly. Like, what is that telling me? Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe I should explore more into, you know, music or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that is just really interesting how it comes up. So it's like when you are in a relationship and or dating and or just paying attention to who you resonate with. Who are you? A who? How are you? <laughs> And when you start paying attention, you start paying attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a perspective change. It's like, especially like for those people who tend to be more on um, the codependent side, like there's there's two spectrums, you know, one people that tend to be more in themselves and people that tend to be more codependent. Um, doesn't mean that you have to take these titles and own them, but it's just being honest with yourself. Like, where do you come? Do you help others before you help yourself or do you help yourself first and like forget about others? So it's like wherever you're at, you find the balance and, you know, you apply that. So like for those who are, are more in the codependent spectrum, like myself that I have been and have worked through. And the only reason how I can identify that is by looking at myself and accepting why I was the way I was and then moving forward with it. But I can't and if I don't like acknowledge it. And Ooh. it's also not something for me to feel ashamed for. Mm -mm. You know, it's like it, it'll empower you. And it's a it's. It doesn't make you, and this is something that's really important too, it doesn't make you better of a person to care about pe people before yourself. Mm -mm. It doesn't make you worse of a person for you to only care about yourself. It just means like it's, it's a your, balance it's is your, needed. It's your part in the system. Yeah. So, And I, also balance is needed naturally if you're not taking anyone to oh, consideration absolutely. or if you're not taking yourself mm -hmm. to consideration. All, like, your life's going to be unbalanced. Exactly, and it's just going to show up everywhere. But I mean... As far as the difference between codependent people in relationships, which there are a lot of them out there where they always have to be with someone. You yeah. know, they can never be alone. Yeah. It's a thing. And then there's other people that have like more of like a lone, not a necessarily a loner, but like a lone wolf kind of energy, mm -hmm. which is I can be alone for five years. Mm -hmm. I, can, I don't have to be in love or be searching for it because I can sit down myself. I love the shit out of myself. You know, like I love me, so I don't need to be searching elsewhere for that love. Yeah. You know, it gets... It turns into something that's lonely and obviously as human beings we need a mate and we need to we, we will always have this innate feeling to gr to, to to connect yeah. onto something but there's nothing wrong with being a codependent person because that's your place mm -hmm. that's your 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 coding requires you to be connected well yeah but like like you know? we were saying before naturally with a balance mm -hmm. you know naturally with a balance i believe that you can start off one way and and hopefully you don't end up the other way you just end up balanced i believe that there's a reason for that you mm -hmm. know like maybe in a past life you were so selfish and now you're making up for it you know maybe like or or maybe it's just manifested in this life if you want to get more grounded in the technicality of like psychology it's like maybe you know you were constantly shown that you were not getting receiving attention so like and instantly you looked at other people and you're like oh okay like so I must not be worthy. As a child, you think these things without realizing. Subconsciously. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to do for others. Or you realize, like, when you do for others, you feel good. But that's the thing that people don't like to talk about. It's like, <laughs> you're not going to do something if you don't gain it. It doesn't make you a bad person. Just be honest about it with yourself. That's the most important thing. It's like, if you're going to do something for someone, it's like, yo, yeah, it's good. I want to do this, yeah. genuinely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's still going to make you feel good. So you're still getting exactly. that from it. And you don't have to hold it over your head like, oh, I'm expecting you to do something now. No, a lot no. of people do. Of course. A lot. Well, that's that's, that's something... scary out there. It's scary out there because you, that's when you can't tell who's real at that point because there's there's a per type of person and and I noticed this traveling to California is that when they say that there's like a fakeness to California's people. In New York City, we will do something for you that we generally just did out of the, our consciousness. It's like, yo, I'm going to hold this door open for you. Yeah. Then... I'm not saying it's not just 
Because there's people we, in New York that we don't suck have time too. to fake it. That's what it is. Exactly, exactly. Like, <laughs> That's I, a New York I, thing. I'm just generally doing this because everybody's having a bad day because it's cold as fuck out. Yeah. Like yo, it's brick. Like, I'm just holding I'm trying the story because I really thought about love. it. I didn't really think too <laughs> like, much about it here. Exactly, but that. certain people will be like, yo, I just opened the door for you, and they'll get mad if someone didn't say, say thank you. you. Yeah. That wasn't part of the deal. That's like, it was like something I was, I was saying the other day. I think I was like tweeting about it. I was saying how, um, actually it's really weird. I don't know how it's, how it's relevant, but I feel like it'll cycle. But mm. I always said that, cause I think it's really weird on Venmo when it's not private. Like, I think it's really Depending weird. Depending on what it is. I guess, I, I yeah. know it's funny in jokes and stuff, like, I don't know, I think it's weird. I just. I think that, I don't know. It's yeah, no, no. But I was there, thinking the same thing when I was on Venmo yesterday. But there are certain things that, like, I I said, like, people that... <laughs> mm, mm. All right, let me just put this out there. Like, my, my ego really lives on Twitter, so I'm just going to, like, put that out there before I say Tweet, tweet. But I said, uh, Venmo is, like, the same... Venmo people that don't go on private are, like, the same as people who put a tip in the tip jar and wait for the person to make eye contact with them yeah. to see it. Oh my and god. Like, cause, like, Cause it's like, if you're oh putting a tip, god. you're putting a tip because you wanna put a tip, you don't have to get the, the credit because then like people, I know even as a person working in service, like when someone puts a tip, like I feel them waiting for me. And like sometimes I purposely don't say thank you or I'll just like, I'll say thank you in my head and I'll just do something else. So they sit with that. They sit with that that space, oh that heavy God. space of what is it that you're, why are you doing something? It's like holding the door open and waiting for them to walk through. Yeah. And just like, okay, it's that like obnoxiously space. long. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not going to lie. There's certain times where I see that someone's having a rough day mm -hmm. and I'll wait till they see that I tip them. Like to let them know they're, they're, you're, you're awesome. But it makes you feel good. That's like, why. I, like, yeah. And but okay. at the same time, I want to make them. Feel good. Have that moment. Yeah. So I'll I'll wait sometimes. But that's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's but there's okay. other people that are like, I want well, you to know it. that they I'm a good person. Like, they need, I, yeah. They need the yeah, validation. They're, 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 Which brings us to another point. Self validating. So everything that we do when we lose ourselves or um, you know, veer away from our core selves or our core, just in general, whether in conversation and dating and anything, is usually based in needing validation from out, external validation from outside of us. How do we solve that? We start validating ourselves in these moments that we feel, we wanna feel good, right? Mm. Why don't we tip ourselves? Why don't we make a little tip jar to make ourselves feel good? You all know? it takes is taking a deep breath and getting quiet with yourself. Doing all, sometimes that's the case and sometimes it's not the case. Sometimes it's literally just like, yourself. sometimes mm. it's going to take a shower. Everyone's different. I know like there's something that had came up not too long ago and it's like, it's funny because you know, naturally like I, I teach meditation and I do a lot of things around, centered around like spirituality and stuff like that. Besides that, it's not my own lane. Um, it's not my final form, you know? <laughs> it's hey. like, but uh, it's, it's something that I definitely do uh, center a lot. And, um, but I don't always meditate. Meditation isn't always good for me. And mm. the reason why I say that, like, of course, taking a deep breath and getting present is. But the co concept of meditation, so let me rephrase that, the concept of meditation, where you need to sit down and you need to be a certain way, you need to, I'm like, I, have no, I need no help in feeling inadequate, thank you. Oh my I, God. I, I don't need to feel like I'm not sitting right or I'm not breathing right mm, or I'm not doing something right. Structured, yeah. Exactly, like, I don't, I, so, and there's, um, there was a psychologist that was talking on this, and shout out to my friend Sam Zaru, like she had posted it. Um, it was talking about how people who have PTSD, people who are in a lot of shock and trauma, sometimes can't sit like and do that because when you start, then it brings more anxiety. So people are like, I don't understand, I can't meditate, and it's bringing, it's like, it's okay. Like you don't have to call it meditation, just take a time and space to find yourself and be present, bring yourself to your breath. Even if you're walking, if you're talking, if you're singing, whatever it is, do something that makes you feel more like you. It doesn't, you don't have to label it Outlet. meditation. Outlet. Yeah, and that's how you validate yourself because you listen to yourself at those times. And when I like to break down meditation, it's also like, we're sitting having a conversation, I come to you and I'm like, yo, listen, Jay, like I am going through it, X, Y, Z, here is like, you know, um, everything and you're listening to it and you're holding that space for me. Meditation is you doing that for yourself. So how long are you going to listen to yourself in your mind? Or are you going to attack yourself? So the thing is, every time you start to be mean, every time it starts to be uncomfortable and scary in your head,
taking that breath or like taking that moment to just go back into your body and being like, I breathe, you know? And then even counting things that you're grateful for, you know, counting things around you. Like if, you, if you're so in your head, start like, okay, there's a window, there's, there's a wall, here's my it's fingers. I can speak, I can mm -hmm. hear, I can smell, I can taste, I can mm -hmm. feel. You know, I'm grateful for these things. Gratefulness was the first step that cracked my awakening. That was the one when I had a drummer and Sandy happened. And I lost my house, obviously. I ex witnessed some crazy shit. And afterwards, I went through that with my parents, you know. A lot of people I know weren't in those waters. A lot of people I know did not actually touch the water and were not neck deep in Sandy's waters. And after losing the house, all this da 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 da, I was, I was moving place to place. I had no place for a while. And I was sitting down with my drummer one day having coffee. I'll never forget it. I'll never, ever, ever forget this moment because it cracked me. Shout out Vinny Rizzo, my man. I said something about my parents and this and that, and I'm so grateful. Like now, I. Getting there, but not when you're when you're getting there, you see it. But are you implementing it? Are you practicing what you preach? Mm -hmm. Please tell me, because most people. But like none of them are hands on. So it's like I said something about my parents and gratefulness and, and he goes because he watched me. He was older, so he, he was keen on this. He watched me and he was like, how are you grateful for them? Mm. Just hit me with it real quick. How? I was like, what do you mean? It's like, how are you grateful? What do you do for them? When they actually take out the garbage, do you take out the garbage? Do you take out the garbage when they don't ask? Do you clean the dishes that are in the sink that aren't yours? Do you, do you go out and pick up anything for them or figure this out or help them out? What do you do on a daily basis to let it be known? Like, to give your gratefulness. Mm -hmm. So in that space, when you are grateful every single day and you wake up, it's tapping in to a divine helping of yourself. That is loving yourself mm -hmm. because it takes a dose of gratefulness to truly find peace and you start to get there and you start, because that once I hit that grateful spot and he hit me with that question, I was never the same after because I started waking up and being actively grateful. Yeah. Which it, it gives it just as it gives a different sense of reward to self it, you feel good because you're helping more people around you too. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's uh, as within as without. Like you, you're, it's both. It's in and out. There's, it's balance. You know, you find that harmony. You know, you're not just saying one thing and then beating yourself up for not following it through. You're actually doing it. You're showing it. You're embodying it. You don't have to talk about it because you're embodying it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be like, yo, mm -hmm. I'm mad authentic when you're mad authentic. Absolutely not. You just, you just yeah. are. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> you just, not. You just are. And, you know? and the sick thing is, it, it either slices or it doesn't mm -hmm. if you're truly authentic and you're truly genuine it, it doesn't need to be them. it hits so hard i I've, I've said that to so, so many hard. people like especially like i have a lot of friends that are musicians too mm. i mean you being a friend that's a musician which we'll get into <laughs> uh, but um, like most majority of my friends are and always have been mm. like growing up and um sometimes people ask me listen to songs and sometimes they're not like where they could be and why mm -hmm. why is that because they don't live what they're saying. You ain't tapped in to yourself. And it's like, mm -hmm. it, it, it's like a, such a, a different, it's like you went, when someone's like, yo, like I'm over here like doing this, doing that, and you know them personally, it's not even in their morality to do so. It doesn't slap. So it's like what you're saying doesn't slap because it's not real. It's not authentic. It's not coming from a dream place. It's not, like, no, it's coming from the yeah. fact that you, you're, it's, it's, it's based off of, off of, uh, a thought that that it might slap. Yeah. That's not yeah. how it slaps. A uh -huh. thought that it might slap is not going to make something slap. Like you just want to get on stage in front of ten thousand people and get that validation. And that's the you thing. Know, that's certain people why they do it. It's your reasoning. Absolutely. Where it comes from. Well, and and music is the most beautiful thing because it'll it'll let you know that you're being inauthentic. Mm -hmm. When I'm thinking too much, I can't play guitar. Mm -hmm. When I when I'm thinking, I can't write songs. When I'm thinking, I can't play with musicians, and I will sound. I, my 15 years of playing will literally be like I just picked up the guitar yesterday. If I'm too much up here and I'm thinking too much, because that's inauthentic. Yeah. Because authenticity comes naturally. It yep. flows like butter. Yep. It, there is no trying. The word try 
doesn't exist if you're authentic because you wake up like that. You don't try. You don't put it in the effort to go, oh, I want to be so-and-so. Oh, so-and-so dresses like this. Mm -hmm. It's like, do, do you even like it's that? Do you thought. even like that color? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you even, why do you wear it? Oh, blah, blah, blah. Like, do you even like that thing that you're wearing? Or mm -hmm. do you even like playing music? Like, what? Like, if you don't wake up and do it naturally, it's going to cause a lot of, like, really self-doubt. And, and you're going you're gonna to hurt yourself a lot by doing something that you don't want to actually do. You're gonna. It's gonna break your character. It breaks a lot. your character, and it just it doesn't hold weight. It doesn't hold integrity, mm. and it's felt not only by everyone else but by yourself. And if you're not taking that time to go back into yourself and get present, be then true to yourself. You're not gonna yeah. understand what's your poison. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna be like, oh, I feel like, sh oh, I feel like, uh, da, da, da. <laughs> like, and whatever the case is, and I don't feel good, mm -hmm. but you don't know where it's coming from. So the only way that you can pinpoint where it's coming from is if you pay attention mm. and you start to look. listen to yourself you know like, exactly listen literally yourself. listen to yourself like, i see like for, for, for real it took um it took me the longest time to just do that to like shut up and stop playing and actually hear the notes i was playing mm -hmm. i'm and doing that now them too. Like, it, and that's the silence in between the notes that's something that's so important that's something that uh after after when i started to come back um doing the podcast when i was originally doing it with <clears throat> after with Ariel and then with Nev, when I first came back, I was just coming out of this kind of traumatic experience out in when I had moved to Brooklyn. And I remember when I had um, packed up all of my stuff and I was moving back to Staten Island, I was thinking about that exact moment because I everything was such chaos and I was so heartbroken about everything that was happening around me. And I was listening to music and then I stopped listening to the music and I started paying attention to what I would think when I wasn't singing. And in those moments of silence in between the notes, in between the words, in between the songs, those pauses, where does my mind go instead of just quickly clicking next, instead of quickly waiting for the next like note to hit or, mm. you know, or singing it early because mm. I don't even want the silence and inserting mm. things that don't belong Being there. Being with thyself. Choosing you know? to do that. And that, that has been like a key. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's quoted by, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, it's quoted by Flea from the Chili Peppers. He says, he says a note that, is is constant if you have constant notes as opposed to a note that you wait 30 seconds on that you can hit a million notes you could do the craziest guitar solo you could do the craziest note thing to it you know it's the most genius thing in the world but it's literally f actually proven apparently scientifically a note after 30 seconds of pause will hit Mm -hmm. a million times harder mm -hmm. than a note right next to another because you're wait. bringing yourself back to yourself that's like you wait. it's the and pause it and then in, it's just like it hits so right and That's it, why it less it. is more yeah less is always more in that case because makes so much sense. if you hold the note i actually oh my god i had a homie of mine shock this out of me it was like a really bad habit for a long time where i just couldn't sit still and i just couldn't play one note and i had to do too much and mm -hmm. because of that it was like the biggest thing in which so this guy gave me the keys he literally gave me the key to this door and he's very very blessed gospel musician very holy shout out mark mensah wayafe my one of my mentors and he literally sat me down with a guitar and he doesn't even play guitar but he's blessed <clears throat> and he start, picked it up a year ago and he plays better than i do <laughs> and uh he goes just hit one note let it ring and i was like da da and then i'd go to the next one just i couldn't not, i couldn't just chill on the note and he goes stop like stop like just stop he goes you're you're sick he goes, he, I, he starts laughing and it wasn't a, it wasn't a demeaning thing. He goes, yo, you're sick. Like your brain, like you're sick. You can't take that moment. You need to wake up out of that. It's social conditioning, essentially. It's like so it goes deep. It's things. rooted. That's, that's something that we were talking about the other day on the phone. It's mm -hmm. like, I was even saying there was a moment that I was on the phone prior talking to Josh, shout out to Josh. Um, and I, I, every time I'm, I'm really working on this whole, like, really be present like you know naturally mm. we're always working on it but it's like a different layer of it whatever mm. and like um Actively. listening to Eckhart Tolle power of now and like I was mm. touching on this um in my previous podcast before this but it's something that's important I feel like I want to repeat it it's like I didn't realize that my ADHD 
was, or like sympt- symptomatic ADHD, is literally just not wanting to be in the moment. It's distraction of mm. being in the moment. So mm. it's like, and, and, then, and then it becomes habit. Right, and mm. then it's like even when you want to be in the moment, you're just uh, exerting habitual your, behavior. Your brain's on wire. Yeah, like, he's so on, he's on like, supercharge. Hey, well, I was on the phone that I was doing my best to be present to, but then I started scrolling while I was on my phone having on speaker, and then I was like, wait, no. And, and then, then you don't even do the that, combo anymore. No, and then you what, forgot what, what they said. <laughs> hard, like I feel like I, because of years of being like this, I've, I'm I'm a good like seventy Multitasker. thirty. I'm a good seventy thirty with that. So mm. it's like I might not hear hundred percent what she's saying, but I heard seventy percent. Mm. Have that, and then mm. I'll. But once I stopped doing that, I got up and I started pacing because now I'm walking and talking. Then when I realized I was doing that, I went into the bathroom. And I was tweezing my eyebrows, mm. and it's like I'm doing these. And then I and I and I was what helped me was saying it out loud like i was like ja this is what i'm doing this is what i'm doing this is what i'm doing i'd never realized that my adhd is just coming from the fact that i didn't want to be in the moment so there's one i'm sure one or plenty of different circumstances when i was a child and being in the moment was a threat so i had i in order to survive i had to escape conditioned so escaping into whether it was video games or music exactly. or hitting my cd player or talking to my stuffed animals exactly. or going outside and looking at the sky, like whatever it was, mm-hmm. it was, and that's what started that behavior and then that manifest. So how, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and it's like, oh, okay, I don't have to end with, I have ADHD, period. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm stuck with this. It's like, no, it's an avid thing that you work with and yeah. you learn, like, yeah. go back to that breath, go back to that one note. How mm-hmm. do you feel when that one note hits? How do you feel when something drops? Open. It's like open. It's just like complete. That's that's when God comes through. That's when the universe opens. It's up like it's 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 like mm-hmm. they son, your soul starts to like wander and then someone slam dunks it right back into your body. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, we said that's slam. Like that's crazy. Hail Mary, straight the fuck in. <laughs> no, it's, oh, oh, it's crazy. Dude, it's intense and it really is. And that's the thing you'll see is with certain musicians, like a lot of music that you love. They just let that chord chill. Like a lot of hit songs yeah. and a lot of powerful music. I'm, I'm, they just die. People sleep on the cowbell. You know, like I was having this conversation the other day. I was like, I was like, oh, I was talking to, I was talking to Chuck and Alexis. You know, and like someone had said, like, um, you know, uh, they, she was doing game, and they were like, oh, uh-huh. what, what instrument would you be? And, and someone said to her, like, she would be the triangle. And she was, like, oh, yeah. sitting with that. Like, I don't know. She was kind of, like, if she felt good or bad, she was kind of just sitting with it. I was, like, that's lit. Like, you make a song with just one sound. Mm. You decide. And mm. then I'm, like, if I was an instrument, I feel like I would definitely be a drum, like a like a demonic drum like mm-hmm. that. Um, they have, like, the slap drums. Or, like, oh, yeah, I love drums. Yeah, I love drums. Like, I feel like I would be drums in, in one side or the mm-hmm. other. I'd be the cowbell. Mm. I really feel like I would it, be that thing. It, it cuts. It grounds. It brings you back. It grounds like, you. What is it mm. when you're listening to Spanish music? When you're listening to reggaeton? When you're listening to like salsa music or any kind of like okay. Spanish music? When I think mm. of like family parties and stuff, and like once you hear it, your hips just oh wow. So each of yeah. the, the bell, it's mm-hmm. just it takes you. It mm-hmm. takes you, and your body responds. Your body, you won't even be thinking you're dancing. Meanwhile, you're walking, and you're like, mm-hmm. that's like that's like a singing bowl, but to you. You know, it hits a certain kind of tone in your body that mm-hmm. just resonates so hard. I mean, you listen to any percussion. I think a, a cowbell might cut through more than any other cu- percussion instrument. Probably more than a snare. Literally. It, it's, it's intense. It's so good. It's just like... It really is. It, 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 it definitely things. grounds you. I feel like it the more... I it. would say, like, the more you get older, the more you want to simplify things. But it's really... It's not even... Yes, yes, the amount of uh returns around the sun you know of course like that does play an effect Mm -hmm. but the more knowledge you acquire the more appealing simplicity is i find you know because i'm pretty i love to do the most i love to do the most but at the same time i also like really simple things and i think like that's a balance that i love about myself because it's like I will like express some. We always talk about this because we do both do the most when it comes to like mm. dressing. Because yeah. we love to express ourselves <laughs> in that way, We're, like with the, the our Leo placements are I in our hair it. I and need in the our big outfits, hair. and like I got, we like, always twenty chains on. Usually, it just makes sense. You right. know, I'm always like, "Wow, great! You did a great job." You know, exactly. And like, <laughs> it's like I understand that, but then also at the times, like I might not be simplistic with my appearance, but then certain things I'll say or certain things I'll do will be really just like subtle done but it cuts yeah. but it cuts so deep and it's just as a musician so much intention it teaches you a lot about yourself the world and everything the way it works because if you hit a bad note it's no different than being in conversation mm-hmm. and saying the wrong thing mm-hmm. 
saying something you really shouldn't have said. But that's the thing. Like, how do you respond after that? Well, you learn or but you just you get beat up it? by good life. By yourself, yeah. most of all. Yeah. So it's like, how do you move with it? Like, do you, it's, you, that's, you, it, you have to learn. It's experience. That's, it's the thing experience. About, that's the thing about doing life is like you throw yourself into this experience where it's like, oh, okay, you know, like jumping on come stage over here and you're like, oh, okay, I messed up. But like, what do I do about it? Because if I don't do this live, you guys won't get a podcast straight up because I will sit here and I will be so tedious oh in the God. way that I edit it. I'm like, I, I said um it. seven no, times. It's, it's, I can't, can't do, do it. it. <laughs> Makes no sense. Can't do it. Hypercritical on self. Oh God, I'm like, oh, I, I, I said so this, stupid. I did that. No. Like, yeah. And it's like, and I think too much. So that's the whole purpose. It's like, even, even now, like we sat I, every week, I write down a list of things I'm going to talk about. And there was a book covering it because I don't even, even look it. at it. I didn't once. even look at didn't it. Didn't need it. Because when you're in the moment, it just flows. You channel. You're in flow state. You exactly. channel. And, it, and it's simple, you know? You just be with it. You don't yeah. think about it. Yeah. Lose that thought. Yeah. Just drop that. And that drop that. You know? It, it, it really is crazy. It, the more simplistic that life gets and the more you learn, as you get older, less becomes more. Like, mm -hmm. just straight up because if you know what you're doing, words came from somewhere. They're very simple. Mm -hmm. A yes and a no. They're one word, but they mean the world. Yes and no change our world changing words, yeah. literally. And it's just one one word, three letters, two letters. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you do less and you learn how to work with it, you cut. Because my biggest problem was I would always be too excited and like a little puppy dog and I would do too much. I lost sessions like that. But through experience and through faith and through learning, mm -hmm. I wasn't meant for those sessions anyway. Yeah. So my natural... And you're also learning. You're also learning in that moment. And something you oh, yeah, said how to just be a professional up, about stuff. It also just lit something up in my head mm. where it was like, I know for myself, when I, I, I speak on myself with this, is like maybe in certain circumstances I do the most, which not even maybe, I know. I do the most or have done the most in certain circumstances. And that was birthed from a fear of not being able to do something. So it was like, I need to do everything right now because – uh, subconscious fear of either I might not ever be able to do it again because X, Y, Z or whatever the case mm -hmm. is. So it's mm -hmm. like a Tons scarcity now. thing, you mm -hmm. know, that like, survival shit. Exactly. Comes in. So it's like it manifests in different ways, you know. Mm -hmm. So like there's certain things like when I notice that, like with oversharing, right? Mm -hmm. When I mm -hmm. overshare and I'm like so anxious, I'm like, oh my god, now everyone knows everything. This yeah. is time ahead. Now I'm like, I'm seeming like I'm crazy. Like, oh my god, everyone knows I'm crazy. Like I know it, but it's okay. I'm dealing with it's it. It's okay. I'm, I'm like, crazy. I'm gonna like, leave it. Like, I'm gonna let them all know what's up. It's like that's the thing. It's like. Also, also just doing something with your chest. Like, even when you get something uh, done and, like, you know, something that... <laughs> shout out to Brie. You know, Brie, I love oh. you, Brie. I love you so much. Um, <laughs> shout out to Brie. <laughs> like, uh. she... Like, I'll say something. Like, sometimes I'll um, post, you know, if you, any of you guys follow me on Instagram, I'll, I'll, I won't i will post anything on my story and then I'll post 70 things in my story. And it'll be, like, really... Um, like, I invite you into my life. Yeah. My, I'm like, yeah. hey, like, this is going on. Here's my rant. Mm -hmm. It used to be car rants. Now it's been, like, living room rants. Or hey, but, um, it's all rants all day, all night. Yeah, but it's, like, it's good. I love it. And uh, But at the same token, sometimes I don't. And, like, I don't really smoke often. Mm -hmm. Like, but if I do smoke, mm -hmm. I'll be like, I got to delete it. I got I got lost. delete all I got lost this. in the sauce. I'll be like, I got No, because I get hypercritical. Because I don't yeah. really smoke with like that. But when I do... If it's not like parental like regs, and I I'm not yeah. like I am too in my head. Mm, this is why I don't smoke really. Yeah. So and it just doesn't suit me. The medicine that worked for me a while of ago course. it doesn't really anymore, mm -hmm. and that's okay. And I accept that. But <laughs> like I will like be like, all right, I need to erase all of these things. Hey, and that brings us back to what we're talking about. Why is it? No, because if I didn't smoke, would I be so hypocritical on myself in that way? I mean, if you didn't smoke, maybe you wouldn't have shared or spoke those things in the first place. But I, but I, usually it's when I didn't smoke. It's usually okay. I did it, yeah. I smoked, uh, and then I did, and I'm like, oh no. no. So then, so like Brie, like the reason why I mentioned Brie, not to just mention Brie, I love mentioning Brie, but I Brie, Brie Bean, um, she will be like, no, leave it. You did that. Mm -hmm. Do it with your whole chest. You already yeah, did true, it. Yeah, true, true, true. Like you did it. No, for Own sure, it. for and sure. And I'm like, you know what? You right. So every time I for go to sure. like go back on something I said or did, I like. I think of Brie being like, now own that shit. I'm like, now you're right, Brie. Yeah. Now you're right. Mm -hmm. like, you know, you hear someone's voice in your head and you're like, mm, yeah. like, you know, mm -hmm. thank you. Which brings us Check back yourself. to like <laughs> our, our like part of the conversation. Everything that we talked about pertains to that. How to not lose yourself. So I even lose myself in 
I would even be say say I, I'm dating somebody and like I or I'm I'm starting to date someone or I'm dating them and I have something on my story and I'm being like super vulnerable mm. and now I'm like oh my god this person is this story mm. like oh I just fucking believe this what the fuck you know like sometimes you do shit like that and you're like fuck 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 I don't, I don't want them to see me in my manic state but it's like but why not this is who you are if that's a person you're supposed to be who with are you they're gonna like that mm-hmm. part of you you know what I mean and you know it's unconditional love. Mm-hmm. They're going to like every part of you, the yeah. good, the bad, and the ugly, mm-hmm. because that's me, you know? I'm me, and if especially if you're the type of person that really, Even you know, if they don't like it, they will accept it. Yeah, even if they don't like and also, if it if it's no harm, no foul, if it comes from an innocent place, mm-hmm. like this, I'm innocently telling you how I feel, you know? And it's yeah. also not biased. It's like literally just an open thought. It's just like, how I feel. Yo, like, yeah. I love the fact that that cloud is mad poofy. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, or the shape of that cloud is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I like that blue sky right now. Like, I'm just being really innocent where there's no good, bad, or ugly. Yeah. And I'm being a weirdo, essentially. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, like, this petal of this flower. and da-da-da-da-da. Which were all like, weird. Like, this is the thing. Yeah. It's, like, I, it's like the ego. Like, I was just doing this thing yesterday where I was being very Twitter on Facebook. And, like, I, one of the things I said is, like, ego be like, nobody understands. Like, I'm different than everybody. And it's like, yo, listen. I'm just, different. We're different. <laughs> we're different. But we are all also the same. Come like it's, the same a, it's a balance. Point. So when you start isolating yourself, like I'm the most differentest different person, like self sabotage. It's it's yeah, and it's it's also like this disconnect, and it's like a way to feel better. And it's, it's ego. like even if you don't, mm-hmm. even if you don't, which ego? What is ego? Like unpack ego for a second. Ego is a construct that we've created to protect ourselves. Mm. At a ve- like since we're mm-hmm. little, like born, like mm-hmm. we have to have ego birthed in us like one of the first chakras that is developing is our survival chakra which is our root chakra and that's developing to survive so i know if i cry my mom's gonna pay attention to me so i'm gonna cry because i'm hungry and if i don't eat i feel like i'm gonna die because i was just born so what the fuck is life you know and like that's like that's baby stuff like, it's natural, <laughs> like that's yeah. baby ego it's now natural. baby ego manifests into adult ego but you need to check and understand and dissect and baby. let go of things that don't no longer serve you if you're not consistently communicating with your ego having a business meeting okay ego soul higher self let's mm-hmm. have a business meeting mm-hmm. ego being mm-hmm. okay this is what i'm afraid of and this is what um, i need to protect myself mm-hmm. with right now right mm-hmm. or in the future or whatever mm-hmm. the case is then your higher self is like i know what i'm doing next i trust that and then your soul is like i know what I, i'm doing all the time mm-hmm. what do you mean i know what i'm born mm-hmm. for so you have these three aspects of yourself and when you Call a business meeting like, hey, guys, let's sit down. And you're not jumping ego like, ego, you're so stupid. Ah. We're going to just kill you. We're going to kill you. The spiritual community Yo. told me to kill you. I drank ayahuasca. You're dead. Oh Why are you God. even you here? You're a ghost. Down, bro. <laughs> like, I'm you're up. a ghost. You don't even exist. You don't oh belong here. Get your Yo, ego out of here. No, it's trash, like, no. Ego. Nah. Your ego is needed. If you don't have it, you will not survive in life. If you don't believe that, then you're, it's a bubble. And I, it will get, gladly get popped on its own. I don't have to do it for mm-hmm. you. And... It's, it gets a bad rep, but it's both it's good needed. and bad. When like, you work with it, then it's great. And then, exactly. and then your ego could also be your confidence, your sense of, like, you need to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. You protect yourself and you protect your peace. It's mm-hmm. a part of you. Mm-hmm. And when you establish a good relationship with your ego, you are protected. That is your it, It's actually like a drive, it's, it's if fun. anything, It's too. fun when you, get to, when, you, when you stop neglecting the parts of yourself that society tells you are bad. And you start actually loving yourself mm-hmm. in those moments, even if you Damn want to straight. change it. Damn even straight. Even if it's something you're like, okay, I'm gonna grow, I'm gonna get better. Like, like it, it becomes easier to do so. Yeah, like, yeah, so exactly. Many once you once cases. you cross that line and don't give a f, like once you cross that line, that line that's like that I, you know, being 16 years old and standing out in New York wearing skinny jeans during a rap era of like Eminem being on top and all this stuff, and you get to all this stuff. I was not popular. In fact, I was popular in one sense. The the target. The kid that got shit on. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, yo, you wear skinny jeans, you dye your hair, blah, 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 you rock and roll. Like, you're not a man. Mm-hmm. And it goes that way. But it's literally like that ego, literally, if it wasn't for it, I wouldn't be where I am today because it gave me the drive to be different. Like, the ego telling you you're different could be just a start. Mm-hmm. It could just let you know, like, hey, like, tap you on the shoulder. Like, hey. You've got something here. Yeah. You need to look into this because yeah. it's really cool. 
and a lot of people might get blessed by it and love it. You know, that ego, it takes ego to get on a stage in front of 20,000 people at Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. It takes ego and it, you can let it either rule you and it, your life will well, check, your, you and balance. check you real that's quick. That's why you balance. That's mm -hmm. why you have to call in your spirit or you at the own same it. time. It's like you have the ego. Okay, now we establish it. Call it, it the spirit we got at the same time. Here. Now, okay, boom. Like we come here, we sit down. What do we do first? Ego equals spirit. What do we do first? Where do we start? Here. We pray. We called in the spirit. I think it's important if you don't want to call it prayer, if you want to call it intention, if you want to call it setting the space, you want to call it whatever you want to call it, whatever makes it good for you. But bringing in your spirit, like bringing in, activating that part of you. You have now, okay, now my physical body, my ego, my, my, my vessel is here. I got to this point. We're here. We're talking. We're moving. We're grooving. Okay, great. Now, how do I get out of here and into here? How do I allow this to open up? Which brings me to the cards that I pulled. How do we get into our, how do we remind ourselves who we are, right? We allow spirit, crown chakra, to flow through and get into our heart. Our heart is the bridge between our physical body and our spirit body. That is the, the, the center core of all things. Like, mm. if your heart chakra is out of whack, everything's out of whack. If mm. any chakra is out of whack, of course, it's imbalanced. But the heart especially... And that's something that I've been learning so much. Mm. And it's the center core, the, the binder of the above and the below. Mm. Now, if you, how do you not lose yourself in a relationship? How do you not lose yourself in any circumstance, any situation? You allow space for that spirit. You allow space for the ego to coexist and not like bash Allow side space for it. to learn. And, you know, if you make a mistake, you learn from it yeah. as opposed to, like, taking it as the ultimate wrongdoing. Yeah, you know, or like disassociating you, from yeah. it and just being like, oh, well, I'm being, not going to think about it. Being humble and respectful towards it. It's like, mm -hmm. yo, I'm not being nice right now. Mm -hmm. And you're showing me mm -hmm. through my relationship that through I'm being mirror. an asshole. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize that. Mm -hmm. Like, realistically, that wasn't nice. <laughs> like, you know? Also, you learn the most. Like, I feel like, and I'm not going to say I'm not going to bold statement, but just like, I feel mm -hmm. that most humans learn the most when you're actually in a relationship because mm -hmm. the consistent mirror. Like, you can learn a it's lot by yourself. <laughs> it's you know, every of day. course, you can still choose to learn a lot by yourself. Like, I know for me, especially like last year, I was like majority by myself. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like I learned so much, but like, you apply everything you learn when you're in a relationship because you care. Also, like but, you but, care with yourself yeah, too, but like but I don't know. But you have to keep it's up. Just different. You got to keep up because if you don't, that person's gonna up. walk. <laughs> or if, you are. Yeah, or you're gonna walk if you can't and take it's, it. It's it's if you can't take looking in that mirror, you mm -hmm. know something's gonna happen when you or look in the mirror. You're gonna stay and you're gonna hate life and then and be toxic and not be very all nice. the bad yeah. qualities in you, and that's still gonna be a mirror, and of you're course. still gonna be dragged. So no matter there what. And you're going to lose yourself. And then maybe you needed to because you needed to find yourself deeper. So also connecting that, I feel relationships, the lessons you learn hit you 20 times harder after math. Mm -hmm. when, when the dust is oh, still hindsight. settling. Oh, yeah. When the dust is mm -hmm. still settling until you're healed again and you're not heartbroken. Mm -hmm. Until that day comes where you heal, there's a lot to like look into oh, that yeah. dust. You have to see through the dust and go, no, okay, that's not okay to do. Yeah. That's not good behavior. Yeah. And this is why that person reacted this way and caused this downfall of the entire relationship. Or why I reacted Or this why way. I did, you that's know? I had to learn that. You you realize that and that's like that's something that's interesting when um with certain relationships where it's like you have certain relationships where you can be like not like best friends but like acquaintances afterwards. It's not painful to be like, "Oh, okay, like if you see them, you had uh, brief of conversations course. and it's not unhealthy, right? And then you have those big breakups where it's like there is no Lines were crossed. talking. Lines were crossed, bridges like, were burned. Yeah, and like, then, or and, like just thinking back on that, like last year I was really unpacking a lot of that um, in a big relationship that I had had. And in hindsight, looking at it, there is like when you look at things and when you look at people that you no longer romanticize, when you... Look at them like a person, and you're like, you're a person. You're capable of good, you're capable of bad. Sometimes we look and we glorify people, and we're like, oh my God, this person, and we'll only remember the good. And sometimes we'll villainize people, and we'll only remember the bad. But when you look at them as a whole, and you really see them, and you're like, wow, I accept how that happened. I can really let this go. 
Definitely. I can really, that's because like, there's such a narrative. Like I remember the beginning of that relationship breakup, it was like, I'm like, you are a villain. Like, you've done so wrong. What? Oh like, what is this? God. Like, how can I process? And like on paper, absolutely. Absolutely. You respectfully, know? Like, respectfully. But like, then, not, also, not okay. <laughs> why, why, given hindsight, I understand why. Mm -hmm. But even if I didn't have concrete proof on certain things, I intuitively knew the entire time I didn't trust myself. So I had a conversation with him last year. We were able to have a conversation. And uh, he was like, we should have had this conversation on the podcast. So that was actually made a really great show. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> but, Beautiful. But either way, the conversation that had happened was like, essentially, I was like, you know, I vilified you because you were the personification of me not believing in myself. You were the personification in me doubting my intuition. And I needed you as a catalyst to trust myself because I knew everything that happened before it happened. And I knew that I knew it. And I said it. And I still didn't apply that knowing mm -hmm. because it wasn't concrete enough mm -hmm. for, for, for a logical society. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't, I didn't have proof of Couldn't anything. Accept I just it. knew. Couldn't accept it at the time. It, acceptance was the biggest thing that I had learned because this- Just listening to other people outside our head once again. Exactly. Like this, this girl told me, she, like I got in some bad news about some stuff and it was something that I'd been fearing for a long time. You know, it was just that letter in the mail that you don't want. And she, oh, the thing out of her mouth was just straight up like, you have really trouble accepting things. Cause like I had a, like, I had someone that I had a, not to go too crazy and not to go too deep into the subject, but I had a drummer that passed on me. And I just like, couldn't stop thinking about it for years, for years, like every day. And it was, if I had learned acceptance then you can look at it a certain way and it just won't hurt that way. Instead, mm -hmm. if you're not accepting anything like, yo, it happened, it, it's done. What's done is done. There's no bringing any of that back. There's no way you can get over it. So like you get hurt, for instance, I got, a, like, I got, a, I got an injury or something happened. Like I got tinnitus in my ears now. Mm -hmm. Guess what? That stuff usually doesn't go away and you have to accept and it's about teaching yourself. And once you can accept things, then the little shit that's doesn't matter. Once you can accept things, that's when miracles happen. That's how it's proven that people who have anything, whether it's, I, I, there was a study that someone had brain cancer. They accepted that they had a tumor. They named it. They were like, all right, little buddy, wow. we're gonna die, we're gonna be friends yeah. now. Mm -hmm. They went for a CAT scan, the doctor was like, whatever you're doing, your tumor's gone. Woo! The power of acceptance Hallelujah. is a whole other Woo! thing. Is that that's a superpower, you know? And that's something that is gonna look and it doesn't matter how many books you read. I mean, it'll help, you know what I'm saying? Books you read, yeah. different things, but like that's it, like, it that's, opens like, a that's something door. that you need to learn. That's your own medicine. Is like how you learn that. Mm -hmm. That's your own medicine. That's mm -hmm. how you figure that out as, by paying attention. As opposed attention. to your poison, because if you don't accept it, guess what you're drinking every day, buddy? Like, <laughs> guess what you're activating every day? Straight when you're up. not activating your healing, you're, also, you're activating Ooh. this other Ooh, self destruction. And, and even when mm -hmm. you are, but even when you are activating your healing, sometimes you have to activate these things that can seem like poison. And when that happens and you activate that, then you can actually, I like, Identify, accept, identify and, and accept it. It's growing because pains. Because either way, you know? it was growing. It's growing So pain. if something was yeah. growing and you're not paying attention to it, it doesn't make it not grow. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get bad news, say, like uh, you get, you find out something and whatever the case is, mm -hmm. that's not healthy either with your mind, with mm -hmm. your body, whatever the case is, it's a blessing that you got to find it out because then you have the chance to accept it and to transmute it. Yeah. So now if you would have never found out, if you're like, oh, I would never want to know, then you would just be co-siding on your... Yes. You'd never grow. Really? You'd and never grow. Like, because if I didn't get that letter, I wouldn't have moved my ass. Mm -hmm. Literally. Yeah. I didn't get that letter. You know, essentially, I wouldn't have changed up my pace and I would have started wasting a lot of time. Because it, it lights a fire under It's your crazy. It's like even just like circling back to the topic of it. Like, how do you not abandon yourself? How do you not abandon yourself in relationships? How, like, who are you? And it's like, what are you willing to accept? You know, you're going to find out a lot about yourself real quick. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out who you mm -hmm. are. You'll be like, damn, like, I didn't know I didn't like this. And especially, and, and yeah, and that's the thing. Like, sometimes when you're Whoa. dating, you don't even realize that you don't have standards. 
you just think about like that ass. Like you like you like oh like I like this and I like this and that. But then something happens that you're like, oh I don't like that. Dude. Maybe that should be a part of these standards. Yo, that what am I it doesn't doing? have to be a checklist, but it's just your own boundaries. Mm. If you don't have your own boundary, you don't respect your own boundaries. People are gonna piss you off. Why? Because you're not respecting. You're not speaking on it. So you gotta elaborate. If someone if you speak on a boundary and then they're not respected. And you're still then staying, you and then move. you're still chilling. You move. Well, then you ain't gonna be very happy. You're not. You're not. And the person isn't either, even if they feel like they are in the moment, because they're just that. That's enabling. That's enabling another toxic behavior. So then you're both just contributing to in each other's demise. In the mud, demise. in the quicksand, and it ain't. It ain't. It changing. takes courage. It takes courage to accept. It takes courage to 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 really to unconditionally love and to accept people just as they are, mm -hmm. without the 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 need. For control and to change and even when you feel the need to control and to change to accept that you're feeling the need to control and change so then bringing back to the present and just accepting again mm -hmm. and that's a cycle mm -hmm. it's like well, so we're all not perfect mm -hmm. i have control issues a lot mm -hmm. of people do i didn't realize that they disguise in other ways i'm like fuck okay i'm learning something new all the time and then i realize and then i'm like fuck they just, you want to control some shit and i'm like all right let it go and then uh -oh. once i accept it then i go back to my present self and i'm like but that's growth but mm. without another person, I wouldn't see it in the same Absolutely. way. And I Absolutely. would just be okay functioning in a judgmental and or controlling type way outside of myself that I Not wasn't growing. aware of Not growing. because I wasn't able to apply it. Mm -hmm. And then you, you meet people and you, and you participate in relationships and in that divine reflection in that mirror. And you really get to be everything you say you are. You get to be everything you say you are or you don't. Or you find out. You find out. <laughs> you definitely do. Straight up. It's like <laughs> taking the mirror and like, hi, guys. I wish yeah. I had a mirror here so badly. Uh, There's one over there, but I can't rip it off the wall. We can't rip it out of the wall. It's literally a door. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like that was really everything, man. Um, doors and mirrors. I <laughs> Doors and mirrors. Oh, and that's both. It's literally, like, yeah, literally, it's a mirror both. door. It is literally both. All right, Ooh, man. Woo. I want to ask you something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot. Uh-oh. I mean, you brought your guitar, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay. You put it over there. I don't know what that is. What is that thing? What is that? Never That's seen that in my life. That's the thing you put over there. Okay. What about it? <laughs> it looks pretty, right? It's just furniture. You I wanna use play, this thing. You want to play one chord? I'll play a chord. <laughs> so, like a, like a do song a, a little sum. A little sum. A little sum. And then we'll leave you guys. I've been reading this book every day. Um, it's a uh, peace of mind daily meditation for easing stress. And it's one page. And we are going to have Jay. Or I can read it now. I'll read it. You know what? I'm well, going to read it. it. Cool. I'll read it just because, like, I don't really like to read out loud because I stutter. And that's something that I um, get self-conscious about. But because I am doing my best to be my best at all times, I will do this for you guys. February 10th. Surely this must be an ancient proverb. If the situation is killing you, then get the hell out. Hugh Prather. At some time in your life, you may experience an emotional or physical or physically painful situation. Perhaps you dislike your job so much that you feel tired and run down all the time. Maybe your relationship makes you so unhappy that you can't seem to concentrate on anything else. Maybe your son or daughter has an alcohol or drug problem and you're worried sick about it. Or perhaps you are continuing to work out with an injury that needs more time to heal. Imagine that whatever situation you're in is like a pair of tight, uncomfortable shoes. Obviously, you want to take the shoes off, but how? Start by being honest with yourself. There are situations in your life that cause you physical. Are there situations in your life that cause you physical and emotional distress? Identify those shoes. Then explore resources that can help you remove those shoes. Make an appointment with your career counselor to discuss a career that's right for you. Ask your partner to talk about issues in the relationship. Attend an AL Anon meeting to learn more about living with addictions. Consult with a sports physician about rehab program for your injury. Start today. You can take steps towards easing your pain. Staying in an impossible situation is impossible. Today, I'll think of things I can do or say to alleviate the pain caused by the circumstances or a person in my life. February 10th. Peace of mind. So basically, in other words, everything we said, everything we said, <laughs> get out <laughs> and get out when it ain't right. Yeah. So uh, this is a guitar, it's a pretty little <laughs> thing. It's homemade, pretty much. You can't buy one of these. This is genuine 
authentic self. Literally, like, you build it yourself. And you can't double that. You can't go and find that. You can't buy that. You can't see that on TV and say, I want that. You have to, you have to just own it, you know? So, I don't know. such a double over here. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. There we go. Hey, blues. Jay Spade. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we didn't even like get this is the thing, guys. You know, I just be out here praying and then going. So like I don't sit with like, all right, how can I explain who this person is? They just explain who they are. You it's up to you to go find them. Okay. J Spades on Instagram. J Spades two 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 J just the letter. Okay. That's me. Okay. And uh is there any other platforms or anything else that you'd like to plug in? That's pretty much the only one I'm rocking right now. Okay, cool. And, um, yeah, you know, that's kind of how it goes with the guests that come on here. The whole point is for them to just show you who they are instead of talking about it. That's a big thing that I've always said. Like, people are like, who are you? And I'm like, I know who I am, but I don't really know how to explain it to you. Like, but so I'm just going to be it. So I'm just going to pick up this guitar and let it talk for me. Exactly. You know? Exactly. It does the work. <laughs> and that's and everything and everything that has been discussed prior, you know? So thank you so much for coming on to this thank show. Thank you so much thank for having for me, Akasha. I appreciate you so too. much. I appreciate you too, man. And Seriously, you know, this was fun. Everybody it wants to know how, you know, how you get those curls. Oh. So luscious. Oh, I can never tell the that viewer, secret. The viewer, I can the viewers, never they, They're dying secret. to know the secret. I can never tell anyone. All right. Okay, you, you have to go into it. it start. You can't tell them. The, um, I, can tell, I can tell you a little bit. It's a, the ear it's tuck? Like the ear tuck? The ear tuck? Oh, touch. okay. So, like, you know, you got big hair and you haven't gotten to cut in a while. All you have to do is hit this spot. Tuck it back. Oh, oh, it's okay. already evolved. Oh, oh it's a hold on. And he's calm. And that's it. Mic drop. There you go. The question you were all wondering this entire show. I just wanted to make sure that they received the I answer. I mean, they definitely need to go up to like a mountain, grab the water, blessed water from an Appalachian mountain, specifically in the northeast coast of Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, Virgo. And, then, Virgo. and okay. then you have to find the hawk's feather with the blue tipped fin like okay. a blue jay. And okay. you can only find one because there's only three birds in the U.S. still. It's very, very, very rare bird. Mm -hmm. You have to go meditate on him in the mountain, in the cove cave. It's the only one. And then you have to think it makes sense. pet like 17 cats a day okay <laughs> i think that's pretty legit <laughs> now you know the recipe um the kitties <laughs> <laughs> well thank you everybody for tuning in i hope you have an amazing wednesday and um yeah remain who you are no matter what remember that divine acceptance and whatever resonates and whatever sticks out for you thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week Bye.